Sephora has come out with a lot of new lip products lately, and I'm gonna be rating every single one of them. I've ranked every single one out of 10 so that we're able to really visualize how good or bad a certain lip product is. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with the lowest performing lip products and then move up to the best performing ones. Now right off the hop, this one's gonna surprise you because these are currently sold out. And I think it's because they went absolutely viral online, but these actually have ranked quite low for me compared to the rest. So these are the Moisture Glow Lip Balms from Makeup by Mario. I actually picked up three. So you guys can see I have some really nice variety in shades. The first one I picked up is Bear Glow, which is like the lightest pink out of the three I picked up. We have Rose Glow, which is a brighter pink, and then Bronze Glow. I've rated these products seven out of 10. Because there's some significant cons to the packaging as well as the actual product. This is a light to medium opacity lip product, and there's actually some nice shades to choose from, which is really nice. A strength with this one is how shiny and how glossy they are. So you can see when I'm applying them and how I wear them that they're very, very shiny. And if you like that kind of glossy, that shine, that hydrated feeling, you're going to really like these. But let's talk about the cons as well and why it's ranked at seven. So the first one is the fact that you cannot roll this product down after. There's quite a few on the market like this where if you click it upward, like that, it's a very significant click. If you click it up too much, you will not be able to retract it, and that is a huge con, in my opinion. The other thing I think with this one is the size of the cylinder of the bullet is too big for especially the Cupid's bow area. So when I'm actually like applying it to this portion of my lips, I'm finding I have to be very, very careful. And this is a product that, because it's such a balmy, moisture kind of giving product, I was hoping this would be something you could throw in your bag and just apply on the go. It gets quite messy around the bullet because you're applying it and it's just so big that it tends to kind of spill over onto the packaging. So I find as well that I'm, at least for myself, I wanna keep my products clean. So I find that I'm like smoothing all the excess product off of the packaging every time I'm done. And then I'm placing it with the cap on. So the shimmer is very slight in these. You can see it when you actually look real close. It's not something that translates on the lips and looks like chunks or big particles. So I do like that too. I just wish like the big flaws of this is definitely the packaging and the size of it. That's the only thing that I wish was better. Let's talk about the next product that is also rated seven out of 10. This is the new Fenty Beauty Semi Matte Icon Lipstick. And this is actually a refillable lipstick. So we have the casing that you buy separately. And you also have the lipstick that you buy separately. So I find personally that assembling this particular lipstick, it just depends on if you happen to be lucky and figure it out pretty quickly. Like I think a lot of really bright people struggled with putting this together. <laughs> and I'm not sure why, myself included. When I got the lipstick bullet, I actually placed it into the casing upside down and it was wedged in there and stuck. So it actually does have a wrong way of doing it and you can really damage your case. I'm gonna show you what it comes with. So you have the case by itself. It actually comes with this little cap and you're supposed to take that little cap off of the case put it on your lipstick, making sure it's on the bottom of the lipstick. Then you place it like this, like upside down into the case until it clicks. If you do not have this cap on the bottom of the lipstick, you can actually place it in here this way. And what happens is that it does fit. It's just backwards <laughs> and definitely messing up your product. The actual case of the lipstick is quite bulky in my opinion and just makes the overall product quite a bit bigger. I will say that the concept of a refillable product is actually really nice and sustainable with like the limited packaging, the economic impact that you have with like less waste. However, I do feel like the sheer size of this and the fact that it's a little bit tricky to put together has kind of missed the mark when it comes to the potential of a refillable product. Now let's talk about the actual lipstick formula because that's also important. <laughs> the formula I was actually pretty impressed with, I'll be honest. So the reason why it's ranked so low is because of the packaging, but also a major, major flaw is to make sure that you are rolling down your lipstick in full because 
it's placed upside down. I think that only like someone that's being a little bit silly or just not thinking would like put their lipstick back in like physically open like this or like completely rolled up. The problem is that there's not a ton of leniency when it comes to this. It really does have to be fully push down. I think I put it like here, like just a little bit past the opening. And when I placed it in initially, it actually squished the product too. So that's another thing you kind of have to think about. And for something like a lipstick, you don't really want to have to think about all of that stuff. So the shade that I picked up is number four, Mother Lava, but it's actually a really beautiful pink color. It has a nice pigmentation to it. It is actually a medium to full opacity product, I would say. So you do get a lot of pigment in one swipe. And even though this is marketed as a semi-matte, I don't know if I see that too much. It's definitely leaning much creamier than I would expect, almost to the point where this should be just marketed as a satin or a full creamy product because I don't see the matteness really at all to justify it being called a semi-matte. We're gonna talk about that again with another product that's coming up because that's an interesting concept. So perhaps I'm just not seeing that a semi-matte is actually still quite creamy but this resembles my other creamy satin lipsticks that don't have an ounce of matte in them. Definitely have great lasting power as well, which I do appreciate. So we do have quite a bit of strengths, but there's really heavy cons in this product as well. This is why they are rated seven out of 10. Let's talk about the next product in our countdown. This is the Rose Ink Lip Sculpt lipstick and I really actually do like the different style of packaging with this. This one compared to the rest of the new releases really stands out because it reminds me of a Crayola crayon. So you guys can kind of see what I'm saying. There's like the color that's corresponding to the actual lipstick on the cap there. So this is actually really lovely and you can actually roll it up from here. So the good news is that you can also roll it down. <laughs> so win for sure. Now this smells like that lipstick smell and I can't quite place it, but it reminds me of, you know when you're playing with your mom's lipsticks or your or her makeup and they don't have a sweet smell or anything, they just have like a cosmetic smell. I don't know how to quite describe that, but it's not like a pleasant smell, nor is it an off-putting smell. So it's definitely not a scented product, but when you put your nose up, it just smells like makeup, if that makes sense. This one has medium opacity and because of the fact that it's a crayon, it's actually really nice to apply. It does have a nice rounded tip so you can actually apply it to the cupid's bow relatively easily and I also liked the color of this one. There's lots of beautiful flattering colors in this line as well. This is considered a velvet matte consistency and finish and I would actually quite agree with that. I do think it does display that nice plushness to the lips, nothing too drying or too tugging on the lips as well, so I do like that. This is very comfortable as well, but I do feel like the lasting power is pretty poor considering this is a velvet matte, and typically those types of finishes should linger a little bit longer than these do. Because I have to reapply this quite often, considering it's a velvet matte, I rated this eight out of 10. I do think it's a very well-balanced rating because for something like this, I wish I didn't have to reapply it as much, but it's still super beautiful. The next lip product we're gonna be talking about is actually from Patrick Ta. This is the Major Volume Plumping Lip Gloss. This is also rated eight out of 10. I'm gonna talk about the strengths of this one as well and the cons that let me down a little bit. So first of all, the packaging is really beautiful. I do think that, you know, it maintains the Patrick Ta branding, which is the rose gold metallic ultra reflective packaging that he has consistently in all of his products. The glass base is a little bit wider and stumpier than I would like. I typically like lip glosses that have longer and skinnier packaging, and that's just a preference. So the fact that this one is quite wide is just a preference thing, but it sort of reminds me of the Fenty. They're not quite the same. The Fenty is still a little bit bigger, but they're not that far off. This is actually the shade Superficial, and this is the one I picked up to test out this lip product. Now, this is a gloss. It's actually very light for opacity, but buildable. And this is one that has a really beautiful golden shimmer in it as well. So it's kind of like a nude, everyday friendly color with a really nice golden shine. The shimmer is not chunky in this product at all. It just seems to melt in to the whole rest of the formula really beautifully and offer a really nice shine instead of like individual glitter particles on the lips. So I do like that. Stickiness is very minimal, which I also appreciate, but this lip gloss has cinnamon in it and it absolutely smells like it. So if 
Oh yeah, like it smells like cinnamon hearts to me, that red candy that we would eat at Valentine's Day and other times of the year, I guess. <laughs> Now, when it comes to the plumping factor, because this is supposed to plump your lips as well, it's kind of hard to evaluate when it comes to plumping products, in my personal opinion. Like, I feel like a lot of us have the expectation that it's going to look like an actual lip injection. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you get your lips done from a nurse injector, for instance, like that look will never be obtained with something like this. If you have lips that are plumped up like that, I would be careful that you're not in anaphylaxis or like an allergy, <laughs> like an allergic reaction to this, right? You don't want your lips to like visibly look like balloons. I just don't think this is possible with products that claim to have plumping. I do think that our expectation of something like this should be just like minimal, very soft fullness than your normal lips without the product. For this particular product, this is very slight and I think, I'll be honest, I don't even know if it did much at all because I was almost trying to find it when I was testing it. So it's kind of like, I don't know, like did it do anything? I'm not sure. <laughs> like, so I'm not gonna necessarily say this is like the most plumping thing I've ever had, but it does claim to do that and you might have some minor success with that. Because the scent of cinnamon is pleasant to me, I didn't mind it. And I do like the fact that it does have a very smoothing effect on the lips. However, one of the things that I found was compared to other glosses that I really love, this is one that seems to fade away pretty fast. It's not necessarily like the worst, but I do feel like I was reapplying it more often than other glosses that are in this countdown. So this is Patrick Ta's Major Volume Plumping Lip Gloss. It's rated eight out of 10. Let's talk about this product from YSL. This is the Slim Radical Semi Matte Lipstick. And this is actually one of the newest ones from one of my favorite brands. I really do think YSL makes some amazing lip products. But the thing with this one is it's another one of those releases that has the Diamond Bullet. This one I have mixed feelings over. I do love that they're doing something innovative. I do like the fact that they're trying something new. I like the packaging despite that. I do think like the matte cap is really beautiful and I love the glossy black base as well. This is also a very flattering color on me. I do think that I really like this color, but here's the biggest thing and it's because of the shape of the lipstick. It is definitely very difficult to apply it, especially to the Cupid's bow. I felt like I had to be very careful and I'm not saying that like I don't wanna try when it comes to lipsticks, but I definitely think that the ease of use plays into how I rate these because if you don't necessarily have a, a mirror readily available, this is gonna be very tough to apply without going outside of your lip lines. So it's not like a very small diamond, it's actually decently large. <laughs> so the best way to do this is to actually angle it and make sure that you're very careful, especially with the Cupid's bow, right? To make sure that that point of the diamond is at the point of your Cupid's bow. The formulation is considered a semi-matte. So we talked about this with the Fenty product not that long ago. Both of them say that they're semi-matte, but both are extremely creamy. And I also like the fact that it does offer quite a bit of lasting power. So it also smells nice. A hint of like a perfume smell hint, but nothing too potent. Like we're talking about when you open up a package like Guerlain makeup, for instance, just like poof, like fragrance, right? Or Clay de Peau, like those, you know, ultra luxury brands. So it's not super in your face, but it's definitely there. Definitely a fan of the formulation, definitely a fan of the color. The shape of the dang lipstick makes things a little bit harder. So this YSL Slim Radical Semi Matte Lipstick is rated eight out of 10. This next product is actually a brand new brand I haven't really tried and I'm super excited to kind of dive right in and start reviewing this line for you guys. This is the Cali Ray Lip Gloss. Now this is a long name, so I'm gonna try my best. When I hauled this, it took me multiple tries. <laughs> it's like one breath, okay. Glazed and infused plumping glassy lip trip lip gloss. Boom, I got it that time. This one is in the shade Free Palomas. It's a really beautiful light pink, very, very flattering. The packaging is super cute. I do think it reminds me of summer. Feels a little bit on the lightweight side, but I do really like it. And this is also supposed to be a plumping product. Now, same thing with the Patrick Ta. This has very similar results. It's very slight, very, very subtle. 
and only if you're kind of finding it. So perhaps, let me know down below, but perhaps for those of us that have maybe thinner lips than myself, you might have a little bit more of a tangible difference when you actually test these products out. Maybe you'll be able to see because you might have a little bit smaller of lips to start off. For myself, I don't think they're the biggest lips in the world, but I also don't really see a difference with them. So not a ton of tingle with this one, basically zero, just like the Patrick Ta, but the plumping thing, I just felt like I had to look for it. It does claim to be hydrating, that is facts. Really, really love that, but I do think the flaw with the packaging, you do have the tendency to have the formula sort of slip out really fast, and if that's the case, you're gonna end up with that overloaded amount of product on your lips, and it'll eventually result in that, you know when you have too much gloss on your lips and you're talking? I've had this happen to a person I was talking to, and it's the most, like, distracting thing it's like pigment is getting like there's a string of pigment between the lips and like as you're talking all you're doing is staring at it right because you're like I just want to help her <laughs> this is like that if you are very careful with applying it you won't have that issue but an overloaded amount of product on your lips will result in that stringy kind of transfer look I do like the fact that it's like a light to medium opacity it's a very easy gloss to apply and throw in your bag so that's what I really like. This was kind of what I was hoping for with the Mario product. But this is one that definitely offers that convenience and that flexibility over the Mario one, which is why it's ranked higher. Definitely love the hydrating factor to this one as well. This one is rated eight out of 10. This next one is rated nine out of 10 because it blew me away. Did not expect to like this. I picked it up because you guys really wanted me to test it. And I thought for sure this was gonna be one <laughs> I was gonna have to report some heartbreaking news about. You know, this is a liquid lipstick, like, come on. I just did not think this would do it, but it did. This is the Makeup by Mario Ultra Lip Suede Lip Creams. These are liquid lipsticks. So I was like, oh dear, this is not gonna go over well. <laughs> like, I personally find as a rule of thumb, I haven't tried a liquid lipstick that has been great for me. Usually they're very drying. They emphasize my lines. They make me look like I am have crusty old lips. It just doesn't look flattering to me, so I don't waste my money on them. But this is one that I was like, whoa, what the heck? This also, okay, packaging, what does this remind you of? This reminds me of Pat McGrath's Liquid Less. That's what it does, like very similar, I think. They definitely have some inspiration with each other, right? <laughs> I think because of that, I also had, you know, some thought thinking that maybe the formulation would be similar to the Pat one as well, because I wasn't a fan of the Pat ones. I loved how thin they were, but they really dried down to an ultra matte, very drying. I was just like, oh, shoot. This one, lip creams, the suedeness of this, you guys, it's lovely a lot more forgiving as well. So we are talking about having some versatility with imperfect lips. When I first tested these, I had some chapped lips going on, so they weren't perfect. I didn't exfoliate them. I didn't do anything crazy to make them look nice. I just put it over my chapped lips and was like, let's see, <laughs> let's see what happens. Is it gonna emphasize them? No, it actually glided over it really beautifully and I was really shocked. Of course, ultimately you wanna have a smooth canvas for these, but the fact that if you don't and they're not gonna look super crappy, I think that's a really big win. The downside of this is that there's only three shades. So I picked up two of them. There's one more that's a little bit deeper. I wonder if he has plans to expand this line. I'm not sure, but I love the fact that they are definitely medium to full coverage. The opacity is really nice and pigmented. Has a little bit of a slight sweet smell. Little bit of a coconutty kind of smell, which is definitely pleasant. It's not off-putting in any way, but I was just shocked that I actually have gravitated towards a liquid lipstick product that doesn't make me look like crap. So I love that. That is a huge win. I think it goes to speak to the fact that the texture and the formula of these are very moussey and whipped and you can actually reapply it over top, which is also something that a lot of liquid lipsticks don't let you do. These are rated nine out of 10. Let's talk about these next. These are the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lipstick Collection, and these are the lipsticks. So we're gonna talk about all of them next. These are ranked nine out of 10 as well. And I would say, okay, packaging wise, definitely lovely. These are satin creamy lipsticks, so they're not matte in any way. I would say the opacity is about medium to full for these as well. And I feel like this is a formula that 
When you first start off with it, it's actually a little bit on the stiffer side, but once you use it a couple of times, it sort of warms up that pigment and it applies a little bit smoother. The shades are super beautiful and super wearable as well. So all three of these shades are modeled on me. The Kala shade is more of like that, you know, everyday kind of nudie pink. We have Daphne, which is my favorite. It's a really nice pink everyday friendly color. And then Peony is the brightest one. And that's the one that is really beautiful as well. So there's definitely enough degree of difference among them to justify having multiple if you really like the formula. The biggest downfall of this, and this is why I ranked it nine, because otherwise it would have been perfect. It just smells a little weird. Like it's not stale or foul or bad, but it just smells a little weird. Like my nose is kind of confused. It's almost like it was trying to be sweet, like I said. That's just something I'm being nitpicky about. These are actually really, really lovely, but when you apply them, the smell does kind of come out. So it doesn't make me want to grab it over my other favorite formulas. So I just wish that smell was a little bit different. Otherwise, it's a really gorgeous product. This is rated nine out of 10. Next we have the glosses. These are also rated nine out of 10. I really like the fact that they have a lot of pigment behind them. So compared to some of the other lip glosses we've talked about, these are quite opaque. They're almost like medium opacity, I would say, and they're buildable to full. This also has the same smell, but it's a little bit worse. Ugh, yeah, it's a little bit worse. Like the lipsticks are still a little sweeter. These are just like, again, it's not off-putting. It's just odd. It's just going to depend on how much smell matters to you. But otherwise, I really do like the formula of these. So again, I'm trying to be very thorough, but when you apply them, definitely the, the smell comes off a little bit. But just like the lipsticks, doesn't waft off of your lips all day. I do like the fact that the packaging has a really beautiful matte cap and a really nice glossy, like very luxurious overall packaging. I do think because of the level of pigmentation, this is gonna require a little bit of attention when you do apply it to the lips. But if you do have a mirror, they're absolutely gorgeous. And when you actually pair them over top of the lipstick, they're even lovelier. So that's what Natasha has done. She's actually put these three lipsticks and the glosses and the liners, we're gonna talk about that as well. And they all have corresponding shade names that match. So the Kala lipstick matches the Kala Gloss, which would match the Kala Lip Liner. Because it's a lip gloss, of course, it's a little bit on the transferable side of things. So I remember I was actually testing these and I put on a mask. <laughs> Again, my mistake, but it's also a nice test. It's part of the research, right? And this one absolutely transferred and actually kind of moved a little bit on my lips because it was so pigmented. It did have a somewhat noticeable smear. For the sake of having a medium to full opacity product, you're gonna wanna be extra careful around masks. These are ranked nine out of 10. So by far the best performing product, in my opinion, in the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose collection are the liners. I love how smooth and creamy these liners are. I ranked these nine and a half out of 10 because there's just a slight bit that I'm gonna talk about that I wish was, well, it's nitpicky, it honestly is. I'm trying to be fair. I'll tell you what made it a little bit off perfect. So these are super soft. I love that you can line them without tugging your lip. I love that they also have the corresponding shades to the gloss and to the lipstick. So if you do get like a trio, of course, adding the lip liner is going to increase the longevity overall because now you've got this creamy, comfortable formula that dries down to a matte and really helps the longevity of your lip product. The only thing that I noticed, if you do more than just line, so if you line and fill, what happens is that if you move too quickly, you're going to erase some of the pigment that you've already placed because it hasn't set down yet. So just make sure that you're actually like when you're doing your layers, you're lining your lips, then you're doing another layer, wait until it sets, like a few seconds or so. Don't go crazy ham and try to fill it in because you'll see when you actually see me modeling these colors, there's some inconsistency a little bit. And the biggest one, of course, is peony because peony is so bright. You can actually see that inconsistency with the pigment lay down on the lips the most. Despite that though, I would say these are one of the creamiest lip liners I have ever tried and I really like to lean 
to the lip liners when I choose to wear them, which isn't very often, but when I do choose to wear them, they have to be comfortable. If they're like really sharp, like pencil crayon like, and I'm lining my lips and they're quite dry, I feel like they just tug. And it's not a comfortable feeling. It almost feels not as pleasant as a creamy one. So I do like that. Probably the best Natasha product in this trio. Let's talk about the next lip product that is new to Sephora and also new to this line. This is from Merit. This is the Signature Lip Lipstick. This is really lovely. I have ranked these 10 out of 10 because they're so pretty. User friendliness is fantastic. There's no off-putting smell. There's no odd smell. It doesn't have a scent at all. So even the what was the lipstick? The rose ink lipstick that smelled like lipstick. You don't have fragrance or anything kind of wafting at you. I really like that. And these are unique because they're kind of like the light to medium opacity level. So they're not medium to full right off the bat. So you can actually shear these down if you want or build them up. They're definitely extremely buildable, very creamy, very lightweight. This is so smooth that it feels like a balm. Like it's just really, really comfortable, which I love. And it's definitely a lightweight formula. I was kind of expecting this to transfer onto my Invisalign trays because of how creamy and comfortable it is, but it hasn't. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's another win. I think out of everything, like all of the lipsticks that are in this countdown, this has to be the lightest weight formulation. So if that's something that is important to you, I think you're really going to love these. And I really like the shade range as well. They're very, very flattering. So I have the shade Slip, which is definitely more on the nude side. And I have Baby, which is more of that, you know, cool toned, like pinky mauve color. So really love that too. I think these are great. I haven't tried a ton from Merit yet, but they did send me some PR as of late, so I'm excited to test out more from the brand. These are 10 out of 10, they're fantastic. Next we have a gloss that is rated 10 out of 10 because I rave about this formulation. This is actually a new shade in this line that I had to talk about. It was recently released on Sephora and I grabbed it like two seconds flat. This is the Tower 28 Milky Shine On Gloss Line. This is in the shade Pistachio, which is funny because it's kind of thrown everybody off with the name, but the formula is really beautiful. It definitely has that milkiness to it. It's very creamy. Definitely has like a light to medium opacity as well. Lots of shine, very comfortable. The tackiness is zero. This is fantastic. Definitely a throw in your bag kind of convenience, very easy to use. This is basically my lips, but better. So I had to get this shade and I'm obsessed. I'll actually show you how this shade compares to the other shades that I have. There's very subtle differences between them and that's because they are light to medium opacity. So you're not gonna see a ton of difference, but it kind of also goes to show that you can't really mess this up. If you get a shade, you can make it work for you because the varying degrees of shade is really not that distinct. So these Tower 28 glosses are 10 out of 10. I love them. Let's talk about the last lip product that Sephora has recently come out with and that is the NARS Afterglow Glosses. You guys, there are a lot here to talk about but I'm gonna talk about how all of them are so consistent when it comes to formulation. Definitely a 10 out of 10 lip gloss. The doe foot is nice and skinny. They feel like they're so smooth and lightweight. They almost feel like an oil in the best way, like a weird way, <laughs> but it's, it's very, like it just glides, it's very smooth. Love the doe foot being so skinny because you can get into the Cupid's bow really easily. My favorite shade by far is Nympho. This is Nympho. It's actually unlike a lot of glosses in my collection. So it's definitely more on the brownie pink side, which I love. I'm typically a girl of habit. I will pick up a shade color and you can see a lot of these colors are very similar because I'm picking up the same color, but these are colors that I wear as well. So I'm also trying to be practical. This is one that doesn't have any shimmer in it. Some of them have shimmer. So the orgasm shade has shimmer in it and the unbroken shade has shimmer in it. This is like a light to medium opacity on first swipe, but it's definitely buildable. Absolutely love this formula from NARS. I really think you should check them out. Back by popular demand is my dog Harvey. I almost feel like I'm going to get in trouble with you guys if I don't show him in videos now. <laughs> so here he is. So he's just come to say hi here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this new lipstick roundup with all of my ratings. And until my next one, guys, take care and stay safe. Bye guys.